Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be doing a review on this epic, life-changing theory book by Troy Stetna, Fretboard Mastery. So why do you need a theory book anyway? Well, I would give two answers for this question. Uh, one would be for the beginner guitarist, and one would be for the advanced guitarist. For the beginner guitarist, I would say you need a theory book because you got to know what to play before you know how to play it. I mean, right? You gotta know what the pentatonic scale is and how to play it, you know, what the shape is, before you know, you know, your alternate picking, sweet picking, you know, hyper picking, all that other stuff within that shape, if you know what I'm saying. So, theory books, and of course I'm talking about fretboard mastery, it shows you different scales, it shows you um, different arpeggios, it shows you all these different modes. Um, parallel scale steadies, um, one single string steadies of scales, all, and all the theory behind the scales and how they intertwine. And now I know theory is pretty scary, but trust me, you just gotta hang with it, trust that he's right, trust that no, he is a mad virtuoso. He's just a great guitarist, and you know, he's been through it uh, too, so you know, just trust these people that they know that the theory stuff is real and you'll get it one day, because you will, trust me. I just had to uh, realize that what they were saying was right and just read it a million times, as many times as I needed to, until I finally got it. So uh, that's what you need to do, too. So that would be the answer I would say for the beginner guitarist. For the advanced guitarist slash intermediate guitarist, I would say Fretboard Mastery would be a good book because it shows you exotic scales, um, arpeggios, um, all these different, you know, chords, all these different uh, complex musical um, structures that make you stand out in your playing, and so you can be unique uh, in your own way, in the way you want, because there's so many guitarists out there, you know, it's not like oboe or something, uh, you know, where no one plays oboe, but like, uh, and actually I do play oboe, so, <laughs> uh, but it's, there's so many guitarists, you have to stand out, you know, if you're gonna do something, you can't be just be like, you know, be like Stevie Ray Vaughan and, or Andy James, you know, you have to stand out, you gotta be your own self, and I'm sure you have the sound that you want is uh, based on your influences, but it is your own imagination in your own way. So this book will help you to stand out, no matter, I think, where you are, because I honestly think you could use this book, like, as long as you live and <laughs> never understand all of the things and play all of these things in here. I mean, look at this. There's, like, a whole three pages full of, like, exotic scales and, and their um, exotic scales and stuff. I mean, it's like, if you want to just learn a bunch of scales and go right ahead, there's about a million in there. And it shows you all these different extended arpeggios. You get the idea. So, an advanced guitarist could benefit from this, that it shows you all these different things when you're in a rut and you're like, I am so tired of playing the G chord. You're like, oh, I can play the G7 chord. G7. So, <laughs> that would be the answer for the advanced intermediate guitarist. Okay, enough about why you should use the book. Let's talk about the book. So this book is Fretboard Mastery by Troy Stetna. It's published by Hal Leonard. And um, let's just dive right in. He teaches you two main, three main things, depending on the way you want to look at it. The first is what to play and the theory behind it, like I was saying earlier. So, you know, your scales, your arpeggios, you get the idea. And it helps you to link your inner ear with your, with your, the guitar neck and the, your, you know, not so much your picking hand because that's technical stuff, but... Um, your, your shapes and stuff, because if you hear something in your head and your inner ear is really just another name for your imagination, so if your imagination imagines something up that sounds really cool, you need to know how to play it on the guitar and not have to go, oh wait, that, um, uh, wait, that note was over here, or wait, no, this note, yeah, you don't want to go note searching like that, so you have to be able to know um, what you're hearing in your ear. And the way he does that, which is kind of the third sort of sub-point of number two, is he teaches you, Troy stresses a lot in this book, um, interval memory and by ear and singing stuff. 
singing the intervals. Now, don't get all scared. If you can't sing, that's fine. If you can't even hum, that's fine. And he said that in the book. You just, just try. And if you're the worst of all singers and hummers, it doesn't matter. It's just trying that matters. All right? So don't get scared. He devotes a lot of the first time of the first chapters to intervals and to uh, singing different scales so that you know what they sound like. Because uh, me, I know what the Mixolydian sounds like because I've played it several times, or not several times, I've played it about a million times. And, uh, you know, I've I associate the sound, so I'm like, oh, that sounds like the Mixolydian. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, it is the Mixolydian. Um, so it teaches you how to picture uh, picture shapes on the fretboard and know what they're going to sound like to summarize it. And it also helps you to write music without your guitar. So if you're like, da 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 and then you're like, that sounds kind of cool, and then you're like imagining it on the guitar, and then you go and you say, and of course that wasn't the same key, but it's the same interval, so I got it. So that will help you not to forget ideas you have when you um, when you come up with your ideas. So it's it's awesome. You can write music when you're grilling burgers or when you're you know whatever when you're out at lunch. I mean, not when you're talking to someone. That would be rude. But you know, any time really in bed, anything you can write music whenever you want, and you can picture what you're going what you're going to play on the guitar, and then the next morning or you know whatever. Um, once you're all dried off from your pool party, you can go inside and play this same... And then you'll be like, wow, that sounds exactly like what I had in my head. And then you're like, well, of course, because you know that that was one, seven, you know, one, you know, etc. You know, so it teaches you how to be able to write music in a way that you've never even thought of being able to do. And, you know, some of these great guys, you can... Um, they just, you can write a whole song and you can just write a whole song in your head and play your guitar almost in your head. So I'm not really there yet, so just don't get too excited, but uh, yeah, it's really great. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys an example from the book. This is Pockable's Canon in D, uh, and don't mind my sweet picking, it is such a hard technique as I'm sure you know, so just bear with me on my sweet picking. encourages readers to make their own arpeggio sequences. So well, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Make sure to go pick up a copy of Trust Detna's Fretboard Mastery. As always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to see all my upcoming posts. Till next time, rock on and God bless.